Welcome to another episode of the Headless Professor speaking about Brink's rules. Rules for statistics and rules for life. Today we're going to give you Brink's rule to reduce errors in statistical calculations. I want you to trust me on this one. This is going to be a way that will really reduce the amount of errors you make when it comes time to doing your calculations in statistics. Here it is. The very first thing you should do when given a data set is to identify the maximum and minimum. In other words, the highest score of all of your cases and the lowest score of all of your cases. Then you calculate the range. That's pretty easy. It's the maximum minus the minimum and the remainder is the range. The reason why we want to have the range is it serves as a great error checker of all of your other descriptive statistics. For example, you're going to be calculating measures of central tendency. You're going to be calculating what we call averages. And those averages involve the mean, the median, and the mode. All three of those measures of average, the mean, median, and mode, must be between the maximum score and the minimum. There is no way you can have a measure of central tendency that lies outside of the range of scores that you are inputting into your data. The other area where this will help you with your error checking is with your measures of dispersion. Here we're talking about things such as mean absolute deviation, the standard deviation, and the interquartile range. These measures of dispersion must be less than the range. In other words, all of these measures of dispersion are less than your greatest measure of dispersion, your maximum score compared to your minimum score. Indeed, each of the measures that we've talked about so far are going to be usually half of the range. And that's true for the mean absolute deviation, the standard deviation, and the interquartile range. The only measure of dispersion that does not follow this rule is the variance. And you have to square root that anyway in order to get the standard deviation. Trust me on this particular rule. It really helps avoid errors. And it even helps avoid data input errors when you use Excel. Having the maximum and minimum out there first is one of the best ways to see when you entered a number that's ridiculously large or ridiculously small. You follow this one of Brink's rules and you will do a better job with your statistical calculations.